Hi, it's Mary McIntyre here. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about focus stacking. And um, this is something that I've been wanting to do for years. And um, I just really didn't have a lot of luck finding an affordable software solution to allow me to do it. But then I bought Affinity Photo and it has a focus merge option, which is really good. Um, first of all, I'm going to tell you um, about why we do that. And basically, when you have a microscope and you put anything under there, the depth of field is really shallow. So that means there's only ever a tiny part of that picture that's in focus at any one time. And if I just share this um, series of pictures to show you, these pictures um, were all taken manually. I just moved the focus and took a picture each time. Um, I'll just get that to skip forward. So you can just see that as you skip through the photographs, there's different bits of it that are in focus at any one time. So this was just a small amount of pictures and basically focus stacking them gave me this result. This was obviously stacked and then processed. And it's a really simple procedure to follow, but it has some really dramatic results. So this is just done manually. So it doesn't give you the entire focus range that um, a different method that I've been working with would give you. Hi, I just wanted to quickly jump on and show you the microscope that I used uh, for the photographs that are in this video. It's an old C. Baker London histology microscope. It's very, very old. And for a light source, we've got a homemade um, kind of car headlight bulb light source that fits in the back. Because that won't illuminate anything from above, like a big fly or a wasp or whatever, I just use a clip on reading light. So I kind of clip that onto there and just angle the head down and point it wherever I need it to be pointed. In terms of attaching the camera, I've got a T-ring with a one centimetre extension tube. So basically you just take one of the eyepieces out of here and just slot the camera into it. And so you can do that with a digital SLR camera like this. Alternatively, one of the things that I do is to take that little nose extension piece off and that screws directly onto my ASI 120 planetary imaging camera. So then you can just capture the video through the computer screen. So a very basic setup, but um, I've had this microscope for years and I love it. And as you'll see in the video, this isn't really the sort of microscope designed for what I'm doing, but I was quite pleased with the results. So if you want to find out more, keep watching. So I will just show you the steps that I follow to, to do the focus stacking. So if I open Affinity Photo and share this screen. So at the top um, in Affinity, if you go up to File and do New Focus Merge, and then you can choose the photographs that you want to do. So um, I've got some test data ready here. This is the wing of um, a green bottle fly. So if I just open these photographs, say this isn't a lot of pictures here, but it gave a really good result. So it's got all of those there and then you click OK. And then the magic just kind of happens. You don't have to do any of the blending or layer masking yourself or anything like that. I've tried doing this manually in Photoshop and I always end up with stripes. So it's really good that um, the software does all that for you. And then once it's aligned everything, it starts to merge them. And it's really cool watching this happening in real time. It does it pretty quickly as well. So it kind of builds up the picture. I don't know how it does this, but it's really clever. So this was a small number of images. So this takes a bit longer if you do obviously a, a bigger data set, but you know, it's not actually that long in terms of image processing. And once you see it building the actual picture together is just really clever. There you go. So that's a, a raw image that's been stacked. So then you just go up to file and export and then you can save that image um, wherever you want to save it. Um, I generally just save it as a JPEG because they were shot in JPEG initially. So that is all that there is to actually doing the focus stacking. Now that 
process involved me manually moving the focus each time and then taking a photograph. And obviously it's very difficult to know whether you've gone the exact number of steps um, to, to kind of cover everything that you wanted to cover. So one of the things that I've been doing is to take a video. So I put the camera, I just use my digital SLR with a T-ring and extension tube. It sits in the eye hole of the camera or alternatively you can use like a planetary imaging camera webcam type thing and slot that in there with the correct tube as well. And basically what I've been doing is making sure the focus is at one end of the range, starting to record the video and then just basically recording as I move through the range of focus. So I'll just show you the video that I took. This is just one example of many that I shot that day. This is um, part of the body of a green bottle fly. And as you move through the focal range, um, get that to play, you can see that it kind of moves along um, that part of the body and you can see all the different hairs coming into focus. And when you're at one end of it, obviously the other end is really badly focused and the other way around. So by shooting the video and moving the focus like this, you end up with way more pictures. But the way that you get those pictures is to extract the video frames using PIP. And it's really easy to do. So I will show you how to do that now. So here we are in PIP. I've just drag and dropped the um, MOV file. That's just the, the video straight off the um, Canon 1100D. But you could also um, just shoot an AVI with a planetary imaging camera, anything like that. So you just drop the video into PIP and then it will automatically select batch mode. All of this stuff basically just keep it raw and um, don't touch anything just the default is absolutely fine um don't bother with quality estimation um i generally keep things in a forward order because it helps me to scroll through the pictures later on but over here instead of an avi you want to select tiff and what that will then do is extract every single individual frame from that video then you go to do processing you can see that it's going to give me 325 images so that's considerably more images than if you are just manually moving the focus each time because even when I thought I was getting all of the range I was probably only getting between 8 and 12 images something like that so 325 is quite a lot of pictures um, so then you just click start processing and it will start extracting them and save them in a folder above um, the level that you got the data from and this is the photograph that I ended up with when I stacked those images. I didn't stack all 300 and odd of them. I just basically stacked every third. So it was around about 100 image stack for this particular picture. And you can see that you get in a lot more detail. Now, obviously, this is still framed extracted from a video. So they're not the highest in terms of resolution, but it kind of does the job. And given the equipment that I'm using, which is very basic, um, I'm actually quite pleased with how this result turned out. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to just put together the video clips that I used and then the stacked result afterwards. So it'll give you an idea of the sorts of things that you can do. Now, this was taken with a histology microscope, which is really not designed for this sort of microscopy. But I'm really pleased with the results I got out of that imaging run that day. So I hope you found this helpful. I'll just run the video now and you can just have a look at some of the videos and the stacked frames that I got out of it.